Hey, everybody, it is Trags Mike Petralia back with the latest episode of the Jungle Roar podcast, powered by CLNS Media and our friends at Prize Picks, North America's number one daily fantasy sports platform. Back with me here on this edition of the Jungle Roar pod is the one and only Jeff Hobson of Bengals.com. I like to call him Butch because he is a Red Sox fan through and through. Butchie, your Red Sox, your Carmine Hose, as we called them back in the day, they are two and two to start the season. And it was just tough to watch. It was like uh, trying to parallel park a bus up there in Seattle. And uh, there's only, and of course, whoever the trags, you'd start the season with a 10 game West Coast trip. Uh, that's the stuff for May or August. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, you can but play it, pretty well and still come back three and seven. Yeah, and that that is those are the quirks of the Major League Baseball schedule. Of course, I was busy covering the uh, oldest team in professional baseball, the Cincinnati Reds, starting two and one. I'll have lots of coverage of that on my Code Reds podcast on the CLNS Media Network. A an incredible ending to Sunday's game, and I think that could jumpstart the Reds to bigger and better things. But we are talking the NFL. We are talking the stripes on uh, the this podcast, the Jungle Roar Pod. And you did some terrific wor- work down in Orlando at the owners' meetings, uh, Butch. And I want to get your impressions, first of all, on your reporting on what Katie Blackburn, uh, the senior executive vice president of the Cincinnati Bengals, had to say about the current lease agreement with Hamilton County and how stadium improvements kind of fit into that puzzle long term and maybe even short term. I think uh, one of the things about uh, PACOR that uh, that when it was built, I think you have to you know tip your hat to the Bengals. Uh, their point man on that was Troy Blackburn. And they made sure that they had a building that they could uh, add to, that they could keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, as, you know, as we've moved into the uh, 21st century. And here we are, the first quarter of the 21st century is pretty much behind us. And uh, they're keeping up with the Joneses. They're expanding. Uh, They're expanding a lot of their space. Uh, You know, uh, they don't need a trainer anymore, uh, uh, Trags. They need uh, lifeguards. They've completely transformed their training room with the tubs. Uh, and uh, they did that last offseason. Right. And now this uh, offseason, they're uh, doing that same thing to the locker room. And they're doing it all around the stadium. Something I, I, I find really interesting is the expansion of uh, Gate D that's going to open that up into the uh, uh, road, which is a real nice bookend with uh, Great American Ballpark on the, uh, on the, uh, on the banks. So. You know, I think that's what they 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 saw what they had in mind when they when they built the thing was let's be able to expand, let's be able to improve it, and uh, you know it's not like other cities that you know twenty years in they're trying to rebuild a stadium. You know, I mean you can go all around the league and uh, stadiums that were built that started to be built after the Bengals, they're they're you know they're ditching them, and uh, you know I think the Bengals are uh, you know they're they're getting the most they can out of the building. I want to read a quote here that you have from Katie Blackburn. We wouldn't do these things if we didn't anticipate hopefully getting something done in the future, Blackburn said, of course, uh, referring to uh, extending the current lease uh, with Hamilton County. We're doing what we think will give us the best opportunity and be good for our fans and hopefully give everyone a good result. She continues, because the stadium is 25 years old, to your point, Butch, and we want to keep it in great condition that it has been in, we have been focused on how we keep maintaining it so we can hopefully make it last a little bit longer into the future. We're very happy with our stadium, but it does require things to be done over time to keep it up to standard. So we've been working hard to try and make sure we do that rather than getting too far behind. What is the significance of those words? Well, I mean, I think if they weren't serious about uh, staying here and, and paying Joe Burrow and the men, mm-hmm. uh, they wouldn't be putting this in. I mean, I think it's uh, empirical evidence. You know, uh, they're uh, they're you have to say they're uh, they're stepping up and doing what they have to do. Uh, you know, I, I uh, think you know, Trags, you've been here longer than I have. You were born and raised here. Yep. Going to a Bengals game. I mean, the folks here in this building, the last maybe two or three years, they've turned coming to the ballpark into an experience. I mean, it's quite a thing. You know this when you yep. come to the ballpark now. It is 
it's a, it's you know it's an event and uh i think you know they're riding the coattails of that you know the we're in the borough era this is perhaps you could argue the high tide of bengaldom right now you know no question about that jeff no yeah. question at all and i think everybody's uh you know i think they're, they're striking while the iron is hot they're uh, gonna uh get this thing done and uh i think i think uh, you know the city's with them you know, and I think the significance, and, and Katie goes on to say a lease extension is something that is on our radar. You know, a lot of fans are focused just on the product on the field. But I think in this particular case, investing in the infrastructure of the team, the literal infrastructure of the team, and the environment that is created around the players who they're investing in, like you mentioned, Joe Burrow, they'll be investing in Jamar Chase. I don't think there's any question in that. And um, the younger players who are going to be with the, the team long term, that does matter. And having a facility that is up to snuff and up to standards is a big deal. And I think they recognize that, and I think they should be uh, recognized uh, for understanding that. I want to ask you, Jeff. You know, there was that report that came out during the NFL Combine uh, from the NFL PA. And every year, uh, you know, for fans who aren't aware, uh, the NFL PA uh, takes a vote of players and they grade out the team, their the teams that the players play for on their facilities and and the amenities uh, that go along with playing in the NFL. The the Bengals were <laughs> did not receive the best grades. Uh, they got three F minuses. And I guess my question here, Butch, is how personal do you think they take it? Or uh, do do the Blackburns take it and does ownership take it? Uh, or is that just part of doing business in today's NFL? understanding that there's going to be criticism from the NFLPA. I think Katie said it best uh, down in Orlando. She said, uh, all feedback is good. You know, I mean, uh, you've, you've got to be listening to people, you know, players, right. fans. I mean, I think uh, that, uh, and I think what's, it's, it's, it's what Taryn Simmons said about Katie when she was uh, talking about the new kickoff rule. Open yes, mind. I saw that, you know, open mind, open mind. And, feedback and uh you know i don't think uh it's kind of what this uh kind of what the new era is built on is communication starting right from from the top down with uh you know it's a big uh big theme of zach uh, taylor right communication and i think that's uh i think it starts at the top i think that and look they weren't the only team there are the the patriots for instance that's a team with six super bowls in the bank they received a couple of F minuses. They received a couple of D's. They, you know, and even the Kansas City Chiefs, I believe, Butch, uh, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I think they were ran, rated 30th overall out of 32 teams. That is a team. There's not a hotter team in the National Football League. And yet the NFLPA came down with a hammer on the uh, Chiefs and the way they treat players. So if you think it's just the Bengals and the reputation in years past and decades past, you're sadly mistaken. It can be a team like the Kansas City Chiefs or the New England Patriots who do have Super Bowls, uh, but they come under the ire of the NFLPA. Well, I think, uh, you know, it's, again, it gets back to communication. You know, it gets back to, uh, you know, like when people say, you know, and uh, uh, you can't, you know, just, when people talk about the Bengals, they've got to get over, you know, they've got to be talking about these Bengals. Correct. You know what I mean? They're, they're, yeah. they're been, and all teams, all franchises grow. You know what I mean? And uh, so when we're talking about the 2024 Bengals, we're not even talking about the 2018 Bengals. You know, we're not talking yeah. about the Marvin Lewis Bengals. We're talking about, you know, uh, now. And uh, I think that's, uh, they've, they've really, uh, I think they've grown. I think they've grown with the era. You know, I think uh, they've, you know, uh, I think Zach, uh, they made sure they were on the same page with Zach. And I think they've, the front office and Zach have set a tone together. Mike Petralia Trags here. I want to tell you about Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. 
It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on all the action while you watch your favorite sports and, of course, players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. You can win now up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You heard that right, with as few as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. This week for me, I'm taking Kevin Durant for more than 28 points and Trey Young for more than 10 assists. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less, it's that easy. Another thing I want to point out here, Jeff, and we're talking with Butch Hobson of Bengals.com does obviously a tremendous job and has for more than quarter of a decade. Is that right? Covering the Cincinnati Bengals? Yeah, it's coming up. This will be uh, April 15th will be my 24th anniversary. Peter Warwick Day. Oh, yes. (laughs) Florida State's finest. Uh, He had uh, he had his biggest day against Kansas City Chiefs. Correct. Oh, there's no question. That was the. uh... If you're the, looking at, uh, I think uh, I wrote a piece return. last year for the 20th anniversary. If you want to, the the uh, the day that the modern Bengalism, the day you know Bengalism as we know it, I think that's the day it was born. That Chiefs team was undefeated, nine and zero, I believe, coming that's into right. and, and Peter Wa- and uh, Peter Warwick out Dante Hall, Dante Hall. Remember yes, Dante he Hall? Did. Was I do. Man. He said he told he was Jay, Devin Hester before Devin Hester. Dante Hall was. That's right. And as he went out to take that punt, he said to T.J. Hushmanzada, I'm going to seal it with a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that, actually. I did not know that. And he did? Yeah, he did indeed. Um, speaking, boy, this is a perfect segue. That's so why I have you on, Butch. Special teams and the new kickoff rules. And something I want to point out is for those who don't think that Katie Blackburn has a very, very influential role in the future of the NFL, take a look at her position on the NFL competition and rules committee. Correct. I mean, that is arguably the most important and significant um, and influential committee in the national football league. And she's on it. And I want to get your read on what she had to say about the new kickoff rule, which I think Butch was modified somewhat for player safety, but more to bring the kickoff back to football. And the second rule is, was definitely for safety. And that is, um, you know, getting rid of uh, the hip drop tackle. I want to get your, your read on Katie Blackburn's um, vote and input uh, in those two changes in the NFL coming up. You know, I, I mean, a lot of us would look at that thing and say, you know, what the heck is this? You know, right down to the alignment, you know, I mean, it's really, it's just hard to get your hand. It looks so different. I mean, I could be the biggest change that I can remember, you know, maybe going back to when Katie's grandfather was on the committee and Paul Brown, and he was a big uh, factor in uh, getting the uh, five-yard rule, the Isaac Curtis rule uh, implemented. I, I, you know, it might not be, I mean, I, it's, it's right there with that as far as impact of the game. You're talking about tracks. You're talking about adding 1,200 plays to the game. You know, that's what they think. It's going to be about 1,200 Kickoffs. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's 1200 new plays, you know? And I think, uh, but Katie, you know, she it, it, it deliberated it. I'm, I'm sure she deliberated with her father and with the, the ownership. And she talked to, uh, spent a lot of time talking to Darren Simmons, you know, uh, the Bengals special teams coach, the, uh, the longest tenured special teams coach in the game. And a guy who had a lot of input into what ended up, uh, into what ended up getting voted on. You know, Darren had a lot of say in there. He wasn't in Orlando with uh, Darren Rizzi and uh, John Fassel, uh, but he was he was part of that working uh, committee. And, uh, you know, I think he spent time talking about it with Katie. I think Katie, uh, you know, I think they kind of I think they kind of ended up on the same page as, uh, you know, let's see, you know, they didn't you know, they didn't want that. It, they didn't want that part of the game to die. They also want it to be safe. They also want the game to be safe. And I think they felt like, you know, that this right now, 
this is this is the best this is the best thing to do and it's a one year thing and they'll we'll probably be right back there next year you know reviewing it but i think right. it's uh you know kudos to the league and to uh the owners for you know look let's 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 try to keep the thing in you know i mean it's a uh, um you're putting a guy in the hall of fame this year devin hester because you you mentioned it before, Trax. Devin Hester's going to the Hall of Fame this year because of what he did on kick returns. Uh, oh, yes. yes, you know I think it's uh, you know it's obviously it's obviously a, a part of the game, and so safety player safety is too. And you know I think this this seems to be uh, a way maybe you can have both. You know, and I think that's the critical thing. I think the NFL, you know, it gets criticized a lot, and we understand that, and understandably so. But they are always trying to make the game more exciting, bring in as many fans as possible. We saw that with the whole Taylor Swift, uh, um, Travis Kelsey hysteria this past season. But they're always looking to expand the reach of the sport. And I think they know the kickoff return can be an exciting play for any casual fan that tunes in and watches uh, the game and, and looks at a guy making three or four or five tacklers miss and racing the length of the field. There's not a more exciting play in the sport than having that happen. And and kudos to the NFL, Butch, uh, for trying to bring that back in. Yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, anything that adds 1,200 plays, I mean, that's ex- I mean, that's exciting. Now, I don't know, is it going to be the kickoff we know and love? I'm not too sure. I mean, is this uh, – is it, you That's know, why it's a one-year rule and revisit, right? right? Yeah, no, it's great to it's great to look at. You know, Darren is pretty. You know, I asked Darren if it's now a punt return because everything's condensed, and you know he doesn't think so. There's enough space in there, and uh, but you know you're gonna you might see different kind of returners. You might see different kind of uh, you know. To me, I'm fascinated by how do you how do you build your roster now? You're going to need two returners. So does that mean you know? That extra receiver spot, that extra running back spot, now that goes to a return. You know, do you have to draft one late? Do you sign one now? Who's out there in free agency? Um, and 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 beyond that, uh, are you looking for maybe bigger guys because it is condensed, or do you still put a premium on speed? I mean, look at what the look at the last two drafts the Bengals have, have done. It's been a it's been a track team. It's the fastest. It's the fastest secondary. It's the fastest group of secondary people they've ever had and uh you know four threes four twos and you know a lot of those guys play special teams and so hard for me to see darren uh uh you know getting away from that but it's interesting to see how so we see how he'll adjust and we're lucky we're lucky in cincinnati we got the we got one of the best in the game at it darren simmons and we'll, it's going to be interesting to see how he uh he adjusts We'll wrap up here, uh, Jeff, and talk about uh, the NFL draft, which is now we can finally say, since we are in the month of April, at the end of this month in Detroit, um, the last uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, of course, the Bengals and the 31 other NFL clubs will be uh, making their selection uh, selections, and the Bengals have 10 of them. I'm going to start right here with this question. I asked James Rapine this last week. Do you think the Bengals having 10 selections impacts the way um, or impacts how aggressively they can um, approach the draft and maybe go for a reach on a player or two? I don't think they'll reach, but I think it, uh, you know, in, in like the first, oh, from 1968 to 2014, I think they traded up three times. And like in the last six drafts, they've traded up five times. And now they've got, uh, three extra picks, you know, including a third. So I think that gives them, I think, it, I don't think they'll reach, but I think they'll be aggressive and get up a guy that they don't think is a reach and maybe pluck a guy. Maybe you'll see, maybe you'll see one or two more trade-ups perhaps. I am of the belief right now, as we sit here in early, early April, April 1st, as we record this podcast on the CLNS Media Network, that they are going offensive tackle. I think it's the safest bet. I think it's one of the deepest positions, high quality deep uh, in this particular draft. And J.C. Latham strikes me as somebody that is up their alley, um, an Alabama guy. They obviously had the success with Jonah Williams out of Bama. Um, Is he a guy that is high on your radar in terms of a possible pick? I think any of those tackles are. I mean, what have they got? Seven deep, perhaps. If you look at some of these... uh... Big boards, 
you know, they've got seven guys uh, jammed in there. So now it all comes down. But what's their what's Frank Pollock's big? You know, what's Frank Pollock's big board? What's uh, well, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, he might not. Uh, we may love Latham. He may hate him. You know, I don't know. You know, it's all, uh, you know, the scouts. I don't know. I mean, I uh, certainly on paper, Latham looks uh, terrific. Um, and uh, you think any club would be glad to have them. My question is not that. I think Latham would be a great fit here. My question is, is he a fit here now with Trent Brown here? Did the draft, did, did the Trent Brown signing open it up? So uh, my read on you know, that, think, I'm know, gonna... like I said, I think Latham or any of those guys sound like they'd be a good fit. But did they open it up? Did they open up the draft? And is it a deep enough tackle draft? Could maybe get one in the second round. My read on that. My read on that, Butch, is that uh-huh. they signed Trent Brown one year, uh, probably as a bridge, prove it season for Trent Brown and uh, see if they can get some real good high productivity out of him. He, of course, it has experience as a left tackle. And, you know, like Jonah did, um, he can move over to the right side. The only difference is Trent Brown has more experience on the right side in the NFL than did uh, Jonah Williams. So uh, the Bengals do have that going for them, but he could be a glorified swing tackle or the rookie that they draft could be the swing. We don't know yet. Um, but I think the Bengals played that really well because you have a guy there that can step in, you know, you have your right tackle to start opening day if need be, but you definitely want to look at drafting an offensive tackle of the future. That's to me, the way they are looking at it. And another guy that I think we should definitely uh, keep in mind is Talise Buaga. He seems to be getting um, a lot of ink uh, in these uh, weeks leading up to the draft. Can you get the, can you get the uh, right tackle of the future in the second round? Yeah, sure. You could. Um, it depends on how many of those tackles fall. And the other thing is the Bengals are drafting 18. If they stay at 18, they will probably have a good idea when it comes to their selection of how, if, if there's a run on tackles at that point. Uh, and if let's say there's four tackles that they still have on their board as first round, upper second round uh, material, then they probably decide to get that tackle in the second round. Um, or move up into the second round and get their guy, which is what having 10 draft picks affords you the capability of doing. Uh, But my sense is, um, you know, they're going to go with the best guy on the board. They're going to go with the guy they have rated highest, no matter the position. You agree with that or has that changed? No, I mean, I think that's, I think the Trent Brown signing clinches that, you know, because I think they, you know, without that move, they're kind of, it was, it was like right tackle or bust, but now, like I say, I mean, if that, I mean, if the, you know, there's going to be a run on quarterbacks, there's going to be a run on wide receivers. You know, what if they get to 18 and the best corners? Sit, man? So the name that you brought up uh, or the name that is on your website. And I want to get to, as soon as I find my notes here, uh, Terry Arnold, Alabama. Fascinating, curious pick or option for you? I'm more uh, kind of – I'm looking more at a Byron Murphy or something like that. I, well, I, I, uh, the defensive Arnold tackle. Yeah. I mean, Arnold is an interesting pick, but, you know, I think uh, obviously with the departure of D.J. Reader and they're, you know, you, you, you're playing in the AFC North, um, you know, those big bodies are, are kind of rare, but certainly three techniques are – you know, uh, they're rare. They're they're also rare. And if uh, to me, you got a better shot at getting one in the first round than you do in the second. They run out quick. You know what I mean? So Arnold's an interesting guy. I mean, I you know, there's no question about that. Uh, how much is he better? You know, how do, how would they rate him uh, with uh, some of those tackles, uh, offensive and defensive? I'm not too sure, but I think you know. It's you know I think they got to take a hard look at uh, both both sides in the line, which I think they have done in the recent past in the first and second rounds. They've they've gone big, and uh, you know I think that's something. Uh, although Arnold would be interesting there, uh, but the, but that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the universal universe of players. If there's if there's guys like Arnold and Murphy sitting out there defensively, and you know you've got Trent Brown. You know, and you know, you might be able to get a guy in the second round. These are things 
this is why I don't think the ta- the right tackle thing is a lot, you know, is uh he can just say it's, you know, I think maybe before the Browns signing, you could say that. But I think now it's uh, gives him an opportunity to look at some of those defensive players. James Rapine and I uh, spoke about Byron Murphy last week, and I think he would be, you know, there's been so much made of the Bengals not drafting a first round defensive tackle since Big Daddy Wilkinson in 1994 out of Ohio State. Um, but it, history doesn't matter anymore, especially to these Bengals. And I think if a Byron Murphy is there, he's the best player on the board. I would have no problem with the Bengals taking him. Certainly there is a need there. And Sheldon Rankins, again, a great three technique. He can get after the passer. Love that free agent signing. Uh, But I would not mind seeing, if I'm a Bengals fan, seeing the Bengals take a big rookie defensive tackle. Thanks to the Trent, uh, thanks to the Trent Brown signing, we now have that debate for they 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 let us uh, they gave us a new debate for the next uh, twenty four days. So I I thank Steve Radicevic for that. Oh, I'm sure he's going to be watching this Jungle War podcast, and he <laughs> will appreciate your uh, compliment and your recognition of Steve. Anything else on your plate, by the way, as we uh, head into the final weeks before the uh, NFL draft? Working on anything, Butch? I just want to uh, kind of explore the mechanics of trading up and uh, take a look at some of the most recent ones. Uh, And I think, too, uh, just kind of, uh, you know, um, the the whole the whole uh, Trent Brown thing, I think, is a really, really interesting because I I take it given how many not not to interrupt you here, Butch, but given how much you've talked about Trent Brown in the last five to seven minutes. You figure that was maybe one of the most significant free agent signings of this free agent class simply because of what it allows them to do and how it allows them to approach a draft. I mean, I agree with you. I mean, I think Rankins is terrific too. That's a, that's a great signing. I mean, just given, I mean, you know, whenever we've, you know, whenever the Bengals have played him, we, we, you know, we write his name three or four times Yes, because he's killed, you know, so it's great to have, he's one of those guys, geez, you're glad to have him on your side. But yeah, the uh, the Brown thing too is uh, it, it, Trags. I don't think I've met a bigger person. I don't, you know, <laughs> I, is, I and I a, yes, I mean, as I joked with James Rapine, I did cover him in New England for one yes, year. Yes, you did. Right, you did. So you you know you know of him, you know him, and uh, you know I think the fact that Teddy Karras, uh, you know, endorsed him in the process says a lot. But uh, I mean, this guy, you know, he can. I mean, as you know, Trags, he He's, can move massive and he can move and And as i pointed out to james last week and i've tweeted this out um go back and watch the only touchdown of super bowl 53 and watch what he does for the left side of the line and where sony michelle runs he runs right on trent brown's backside into a gaping hole for the touchdown Craigs, you covered that team. There's people that I talked to people last week who said, you know, he was their most valuable lineman on that on that on Tom Brady's last Super Bowl championship. Oh, I would not disagree with that. I think he yeah. was he was a massive people mover, is what he yeah. was. Yeah. And he played the let think about it. He played, he protected Tom Brady's blind side. Is yeah. there a more valued, um, important member of the offensive line than Protecting Tom Brady's back uh, blind side? I don't think so. <laughs> well, although but that Trent had a great game, and you also got, I think it was Joe Tooney. That was his last game as a Patriot, wasn't it? Correct. So one yep. of his last games as a Patriot. And Aaron Donald, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, oh oh. I mean, he pretty much he pretty much threw a shutout at one of the greatest players of all time. So. Well, there's also reason for that. And right. you know, I think we can go back and debate this on another podcast, but you know, the Beng- or the uh, Patriots threw a lot of stunts, threw everything. Dante Scarnecchi has said, I am going to wear down Aaron Donald in that game. Yeah. And they did. They double teamed them. They triple teamed them. Yeah. They threw offensive line stunts out. They did everything possible to wear down um, uh, Aaron Donald in that game. Yeah. And I it think worked. Trent Brown, like you said, I think Trent Brown was a reason because, you know, he was banging into that wall too. So. Um, you know, so I, I, uh, yeah, I really intriguing pickup on a number of fronts. Anybody who makes Orlando Brown look small, I mean, jeez, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yes. uh, 
I'm still looking for my hand. I shook his hand. I can't find it. Oh, but well, we're going to uh, wrap it up there as uh, the clock is winding down on this episode of the Jungle World podcast. I want to thank Jeff Hobson of Bengals.com for joining me on this episode. Anything else before I let you go that you want to push? Just you're working on um, breaking down the draft. Yeah, just trading up and, uh, you know, I'll have two more two more mocks uh, just to uh, see what we got. See what we got. Uh, just try to get the temperature out. Maybe we'll do a trade with the Jets. Maybe if the Jets uh, trade down, I can find somebody to trade down with the Jets and try to get the mock looking as real as it maybe. Yeah. Because let's face it, it's you can't come, you know, you can't come close. But just looking for that universal players that are going to be uh, that are going to be hanging there at 18. All right, he is Jeff Hobson of Bengals.com. Be sure to follow him online and on X and uh, anywhere else people should follow your work, Butch. That's it, Trags. Bengals.com. There you go. I want to thank uh, Jeff Hobson for joining me on this episode of the Jungle World Podcast, powered by CLNS Media and our friends at Prize Picks, North America's number one daily fantasy sports platform. Until next week, I'm Mike Petralia Trags. Keep that jungle roaring.